Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson, Rashi Rice. Year after year, we see rookie wide receivers blow up down the stretch and help win people leagues. I'm going to walk you through five rookie wide receivers that you do not want to be leaving your redraft leagues without. We're going to start at the top, Malik Neighbors. For me, he was a wide receiver 1A, wide receiver 1B with Marvin Harrison Jr. when they were coming out as prospects. If you have my rookie guide, you could see that he was a 93rd point seven percentile prospect. I love Malik Neighbors, the ability in terms of route running, ability to get open downfield, but also his phenomenal ability with the ball in his hands. This guy is an absolute superstar, and yet you can get him a whole round after Marvin Harrison right now. I think he has the potential to be an absolute target hog in New York. Yeah, we can slate Daniel Jones as much as you like, but he is a competent NFL quarterback and he's going to force feed the ball to Malik Neighbors because there's not much else in this offense. I think that Malik Neighbors could absolutely be a star this season and he could blow up and win your league as we get down the stretch. Before I get to the next guy, though, we are coming so close to 3,000 subscribers. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do it now. And while you're there, leave yourself a comment. You will get yourself entered into the summer giveaway. We're giving away $100 in cold hard cash, 12 months membership to our premium content, and a £25 voucher to our merchandise store. Every single comment you leave on any video gets you an entry. The next guy, Brian Thomas Jr., a little bit less on him as a prospect. I liked him. I could see the potential, but I think there's some faults in his game. A one-year wonder at LSU. However, if you are looking for ceiling, if you are looking for absolute premium potential outcomes, Brian Thomas Jr. is arguably a top 24 wide receiver if you're looking for pure ceiling. He's going to be paired with Trevor Lawrence. There is no true number one target in this offense. Evan Ingram, Christian Kirk, they're good at that sort of underneath intermediate stuff, but they need a guy, a true X, a true guy that can command 150 plus targets. If Brian Thomas can blow up, he could go all the way and win you leagues. Xavier Worthy, anyone who's been following my content over the last six months knows I'm a huge Xavier Worthy fan. He is so much more than just a deep threat that people are trying to paint him as. He is a good root technician. And I think that the Chiefs offense and the Andy Reid is going to get so many ways for him to get three releases and, and make some uh, moves downfield. Also, the good thing is, this is a Patrick Mahomes offense where there was no clear-cut number one wide receiver. Rashi Rice, he's had a, a troublesome offseason. We don't know quite if he's going to get suspended, what's going to happen there. Travis Kelsey, I think he's on the, I'm going to get ready for the playoff plan, and I think we could see his volume reduce during the season. And... Yeah, Marquise Brown, they brought him in, but it's a one-year contract. There's nothing played there. I think Xavier Worthy could potentially be the target leader in this Chiefs offense. And this guy, yes, he can go deep, but he can get the ball. He can get open underneath. He's going to get used on those crossing routes that we saw Rashi Rice use last year. And also, he is fantastic with the ball in his hands. So Xavier Worthy could be a true star immediately. Reminder. Get those comments in below. If you disagree with someone I'm talking about, get a comment, subscribe, and get yourself entered into our very exciting summer draw. The next guy I'm going to talk about is Jermaine Burton. Now, as a prospect, there are plenty of flaws. If you look at the analytic profile, he never really truly put it together through his four years. He played at Georgia for two years. He played at Alabama for two years. And he never truly put a phenomenal year on the on the on the record. He never saw over 21% targets per route run. The yards per route run was competent, but not great. However, this guy is arguably a top three talent in terms of the wide receiver room coming out of this year's rookie class. The reason he fell to the third rounds were off-field concerns. He now lands in a situation in Cincinnati where, yes, they've got Jamar Chase, but T. Higgins is in the last year of his contract, if he picks up any niggles, if he picks up any injuries, I don't think he's going to be willing to play hurt because the Bengals haven't given him that long-term contract. I also think that you've got to understand Jermaine Burton, he's got that inside-outside flexibility. They're talking about moving Jamar Chase into the slot. I think we can see a, a scenario where Jermaine Burton is on the field 70, 80% of snaps. 
And he's got the huge contingent upside. If there's an injury to Jamal Chase, if there's a niggle to T Higgins, Jermaine Burton could be on the field 90 plus percent of snaps. And this is going to be an offense that puts up points. Jermaine Burton is a supremely talented player. If he didn't have the off-field concerns, he would have been going in the top 10 in the NFL draft. I think Jermaine Burton, look, he's had an off-season where we've had no issues, no rumors, no concerns at all. If he can keep his head on straight, he could be phenomenal in the NFL. The final guy I'm going to talk about, Malachi Corley. Now, this is probably a guy that you can get off waivers or maybe the last round of your draft. He is going to be tied to potentially an improved offense. Now, yes, I'm a Jets fan, but Aaron Rodgers is going to bring this offense forward leaps and bounds. And there's no number two target. We know Garrett Wilson's probably going to see 150 plus targets, but... Mike Williams coming off an ACL tear. He's only just got off pup. I'm not convinced that he's going to be fully healthy to start the season. Xavier Gibson, decent returner, shown some flashes last year, but he's been injured in the preseason. Tyler Conklin is a tight end, maybe, but there is a path and a clear path to targets for Malachi Corley immediately. He is phenomenal with the ball in his hands. Go and look at his usage in college. There is... He's the only player that had a usage where his yak, his uh, average depth of target was so low that his yak outstretched his average depth of target. People throw around the Debo comps absolutely ridiculously, but this is a guy that could see usage similar to Debo Samuel or Rashi Rice last year, where the average depth of target is around four or five yards downfield, but he's just being allowed to go and make something happen after, after the catch. I think that Malachi Corley has a path to supreme upside and could potentially go win you some leagues. Do you disagree? Do you think there's anyone that I've missed? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, get yourself that entry into our giveaway because it's redraft season, baby.